What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video here. Today is Saturday, October 6th, 2018. Just got done the first week of the month. Um, NFP jobs report out of the US and Canadian jobs report last week out of Canada. Mixed reports on both. Um, not the greatest jobs Friday, so a little bit of choppy price action, but had a pretty decent week last week had some strong moves some strong sell-offs in the new zealand dollar aussie dollar some strong appreciation and and rallies in the pound the u.s dollar um so it did have a very very uh significant week move wise in the forex markets had some great trades here at the uh signal room here in core fx um caught some nice shorts on new zealand dollar aussie dollar aussie swiss new zealand swiss uh, and some others, but um, I hope everybody's having a great trading week out there. Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Anyone who hasn't seen these before, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the charts and do a full dive into the foreign exchange markets charts. I go over each major currencies index. I go over the U.S. dollar major crosses, and then all of the pairs I have on my watch list for the week. I have about 10, 15 pairs on my watch list usually. Show exactly what I'm looking for, exactly what the pairs are doing. Um, dive into a little bit of the news, what happened last week, and then at the end we will catch up on what's going on this week in the news and really just do a full breakdown of what to watch for the week ahead in the Forex markets. Everything you need to find to get ready for next week in one video for the foreign currency FX Forex traders out there. So thank you guys. I really appreciate taking the time to watch these videos. I hope you guys enjoy what you see. If you're interested in learning more about Forex trading, um, check the links below. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and switch into the charts here now, guys. I appreciate it, and I'll catch you in there. All righty, so starting off here with the Dixie, the U.S. dollar index. This is the U.S. dollar paired up against a basket of other currencies to show the overall relative performance of the U.S. dollar. Um, as you guys can see, we had a very bullish week here with the U.S. dollar, the dollar uh opened up and continued to move higher Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, as you can see in here. And then Thursday, Friday, we had a little bit of a sell-off leading into the jobs report, uh, NFP Friday, the first week of the month. As you guys know, we did have that report this Friday and a little bit of mixed dollar, as you guys can see, dropping it down a little smaller. You can see we had some chopping around going on here. Um, no clear direction from the dollar. We had a little bit of mixed numbers. Unemployment ticked down lower to 3.7, but we created a little bit less jobs than we expected last month in September. So a little bit of a mixed data report, but technically speaking, we are in a very critical spot. Uh, we came up, and as you can see on Wednesday with this strong bullish candle, we broke and closed above this significant 95.50 area that was acting as resistance. As you guys can see, we did break up and above it before, and it immediately reversed and came back under it. It has been under it since, but now we have broken above it again. We had a little bit of a spinning top indecision candle close here on Friday. I do think that we will see continued strength out of the dollar. I think this will continue higher. I think we broke and closed above this key uh, um, technical level. And I think with this trend, price above the 50 SMA, set a higher high, sloping upwards. I think we are now breaking structure and setting what looks like to be the start to this upward trend continuing. So I'll be watching for strong dollar to start this week. Again, obviously, we have to be ready to adjust our bias as things change if this price um, moves lower and breaks below this 9.9550 again and starts trading under this red zone, um, that will reverse our thought process. However, to start the week, we need to develop a bias. We need to have an idea of where we think price is going to go. And that is why we are looking for a bullish dollar to start this week. Euro, uh, pretty inverse of this dollar. So as you guys saw, we were in this. Um, first, we were in a strong downtrend. Then we came into this descending triangle on this strong 110.50 level. Broke lower, then reversed, like we saw with the dollar, but in verse. Um, came pushed up here, set a higher high, pulled back for a higher low, pushed up for another higher high, pulled back. We were retesting this higher low, but we did break it on Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we pretty much just consolidated under this level. Again, with the US dollar, um, as the dollar is consolidating up and above that 95.50, we have the euro consolidating below the 11050 very strong support level as you guys can see here we are now trading below so i do think we see the euro move lower this week we set a lower low here but i think this lower low is not done i think we will break out lower again maybe come down to retest this uh, 109 level down here before maybe we get another pullback and potentially continues that move to the downside uh, but all in all we are now closed and below and basing below this significant support level so i see uh, downside potential in the euro this week for sure. Again, that could change and we need to be ready to adjust if that moves higher and breaks above that 110.50. However, 
right now that is our bias. Uh, the yen hit this strong weekly level, as you can see with this blue uh, rectangle here. Hit the strong weekly level on Wednesday and has bounced since. We've seen back-to-back -back bullish days. That is tied to the S&P 500, which we will go over. As you can see, Thursday, Friday, we had pretty strong sell-offs. Uh, we are retesting this strong support level and hasn't broken structure. 50 SMA is holding. So um, this major structure here is still holding. We did break this temporary structure here, but this major structure is holding. We still have this uh, major swing point before price came up. Pulled back, retesting it. As you can see, looking left, this is a significant support zone now. Um, what that has to do with the yen is the yen is a safe haven asset. Basically, works um, inversely with the S and P 500. When the S and P 500 is crashing, usually the yen goes up. It's a safe haven currency. S and P 500 is going up. Usually, the yen goes down because it's a safe haven currency. Money's leaving it, going into riskier assets. Um, that is a longer topic for another time. If you guys understand risk risk on risk off from watching my videos. Great. If not, do a little search on it. Um, watch some of my other videos. I go over a lot in detail. Uh, but as you can see, we are bouncing off the strong weekly support. I'm looking for price to come up to around this 84.80 area up here where we had prior structure. Maybe look for uh, price to tap this trend line. Maybe the 50 SMA rolls over, come up here. But um, all in all, I am looking for a little bit of a bounce from the yen, but we are in a downtrend. We're setting lower lows, lower highs. Price is moving strongly lower. So uh, bearish yen is certainly what we want to look for. We just got to know when to look for the bearish yen. We want to wait for a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of a rally, and then look for it. We also hit this strong weekly support level and price is reacting to it. So we don't want to jump into shorts when we're at a strong level and price is bouncing off it. So the yen, we are looking for a little bit of a bounce before we're then bearish again. British pound did do what we expected it to, even though price did come a little bit lower than we had thought. Temporarily was below the 50 SMA, but came back right above it and now has bounced off it again. So we're setting a higher high, pull back for a higher low, now making a push potentially to make a higher high. Uh, 129 is the next target I'm looking for up here for price to hit. So I do expect the pound to continue to be strong this week. We might open a little lower, or maybe pull back a little bit first couple days of the week and then push higher, but we do have some news out of the pound this week. We have the uh, GDP report um, coming up here this week ahead on Wednesday. So maybe we see, you know, a little bit of a consolidation or pullback on the pound Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday we get some strong data that can potentially propel this pair higher up to this 129 resistance level. Canadian dollar still in this channel. Um, we did push really higher to start the week, opened much higher um, on the NAFTA talks, the new agreement, the USMCA, United States, Mexico, Canada agreement. Um, trade deal basically between the US, Mexico, and Canada, and to new NAFTA. They came to agreement, brought Canada into the deal, and now have agreement. So there was some strong bullishness on Canada open last week, but price did sell off from there. Um, not the best jobs data out of Canada either last week. Um, so the sell off was on Friday correlated to that, but as you guys can see, we just sold off, filled this gap from that open, and have now moved down towards the bottom of this channel. I do think we could see more of a bounce this week and see a rally in the Canadian dollar, so I'm looking for a strong Canadian dollar for this week. Swiss franc um, was pushing higher, and the past two weeks has just dropped like a rock. Um, coming down to this 94 to 93.50 weekly support level down here, I uh, don't want to chase this falling knife, try to catch it. I don't want to chase this strength in the weakness. So um, essentially what we could wait for for this pair is price to get a little bit of a bounce and then maybe look for shorting opportunities after that bounce to catch the next move lower. So right now, Swiss franc, I don't have any one direction, uh, one way or another. I don't have any strong feeling or opinion on it, but um, we are approaching a strong level. Australian dollar, this downtrend just continued. Aussie, New Zealand, great shorts this week. Um, this downtrend just continued as we had anticipated after this lower high last week I told you guys coming into this week this 72 level was a support to watch but Expecting price to move lower and potentially go down to set a new lower low That is exactly what we did So now we're coming up to a weekly zone with this blue level down here at 70 Which is another very strong psychological support level as well We're gonna be waiting for price to bounce and then look for our shorting opportunities again Maybe when it rallies back up to 71 or something like that. So right now we're in a you know, wait and see phase with the Aussie and New Zealand, which we'll go to in a second. Um, but their strong, strong bearishness just continues. So we will be looking for shorting opportunities across the board on their pairs, just waiting for the right time to get in them. New Zealand dollar, as you can see on the weekly chart, very strong bearish candle, 
broken closed well below this 65 support here um, very strong bearishness as you can see just continuing this nice downtrend switching it to the daily you can see three days in a row here uh, monday tuesday a little stagnant and then wednesday thursday friday strong 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 bearish days broke right below this support and just sold right off so um that week new zealand dollar continues as we are watching it fall here just did s p 500 but it's still in this uptrend broke this trend line testing 50 sma structure um definitely at a significant level we want to watch for here we probably will see a bounce and price continue higher but a uh, break of this level here at 28.75 could be a significant break. Um, we can watch the 50 SMA. The 50 SMA is acting as the support now on that level as well. So if we see price close and break below that, that is a very strong sign that there is some bearishness coming. And we know in these S&P 500 and U.S. equity markets, we get much stronger moves when we have sell-offs than we do when we have bull rallies, right? So those are some examples of sell-offs. These are some bull moves. And then we get strong sell-offs, some bull moves, and then some strong sell-offs, some bull moves, strong sell-offs, right? So we get lots and lots of um, fear coming into the markets when these markets start going down, and that causes strong sell-offs. So this could be one of them. We could see price come out, maybe bounce a little, or maybe it breaks close below here, and that could cause some fear and some passion, panic and, and price to sell off pretty dramatically. So that is something we want to be watching for with S&P. Gold, uh, still in this consolidation down here. As you guys know, I've been calling for shorting gold on rallies ever since up here when we broke this trend line support here. Um, so we've been selling rallies, selling rallies, selling rallies. We've been stuck in this consolidation here. It hasn't really moved lower much, but we do want to stick to the game plan and look for short opportunities below this 115 resistance. So um, not too much development in gold. We are still just basing here, but short bias remains for me. Again, that is something that is linked to S&P 500. If we see that S&P 500 uh, sell off, like we were saying, that gold could reverse that trend and push higher. Um, U.S. oil, we broke temporarily above 75 and 76, and price immediately reversed on Thursday, this strong bearish engulfing candle. Um, that kind of shows me some uh, strong bearishness temporarily. I think this, this has the potential to sell off pretty hard from here. Oil, uh, there's rumors of russia and saudi arabia making private opec deals themselves uh at developing i have to look more into that but there are some things on the horizon with oil to keep an eye on outside of just technicals so this is something we certainly want to see i know there's oil revisions and sanctions and stuff in the new usmca agreement to be digested as well so oil is definitely something to keep an eye on it is heavily correlated with canadian dollar so if this continues to sell off, maybe we don't see that strength in the Canadian dollar. But either way, we want to keep an eye on this. And uh, we are in an uptrend, pull back off of it. But I do not like this temporary false break above with this bearish engulfing. That makes me look like it's going to sell off pretty hard. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one there. Switching over to our um, uh, U.S. dollar crosses here, starting with the euro dollar. As you guys can see here, this very, very strong weekly level in blue has broken on Wednesday pull back to retest got an indecision doji candle here under this resistance but all eyes are to the downside for me for the euro um, with price below that level so this looks like a good short trade for me um, different number of different ways you can get into shorts like this you can play a breakout of this support down here you can play a retest of this resistance with a limit order up here you can play a break of maybe you want to play the smaller time frame counter trend line here a uh, number of different ways to play it but all in all i am still technically bearish on the euro this week for sure so that's something we'll be watching for pound dollar um, reverse this downtrend set a higher high pull back for a higher low thought we would have held at this red support level but price did sell off close below it tuesday wednesday but immediately got a bullish engulfing off of this 50 sma i mean yeah 50 sma um, also this daily trend line now is the third bounce to it that we validated with this move away and then got this bullish bar afterwards so i am expecting 133 as the next target for the pound dollar i do think we will see some strength in this um as it moves higher but again we'll have to wait and see what the dollar does what pound looks like and what everything else is doing um but that's the technical analysis breakdown right now we can drop this down even to the four hour time frame and see we got a nice little counter trend break here showing us that that pullback is most likely at an end um canadian dollar u.s dollar canadian dollar in this downward trend right so we are setting lower lows and lower highs pulled back now what could be a lower high 
Um, not the cleanest structure, pretty choppy, but this was a significant support level that we broke here, 129. Broke below, has reversed back up and above, but the SMAs still look good. We have another strong level up here at 130, so uh, potential shorts could be on the playbook as we will keep an eye on how this pair develops into this week. Dollar yen broke above a strong level 113 and then 113.50. Uh, has pulled back now, but as you see looking left, this is a strong level we are now above. However, um, this is also a very significant resistance. We are underneath on the weekly here. So a um, little bit of mixed signals here out of the dollar yen. Going to have to keep an eye on what's going on. We've got a strong rejection wick candle close on the weekly chart. Don't use the weekly charts too, too much in my analysis, but um, I definitely want to be aware of things like this, right? Price does look a little bit overbought. We're pushed away from the moving averages. Price has been moving higher. Tap that resistance. Didn't get a bearish engulfing like we could have, but did have back-to-back -back bearish days off this resistance. So this is something we want to keep an eye on. Watch out for. See how it develops. I'm not running into anything right now with this pair. Uh, I'm not running after any positions, but I will be keeping an eye on it. Dollar Swiss Franc. Another one. Um... Not the greatest setup, you know, we we're in this downtrend and then price exploded higher with these past two weeks, just ripping higher. We have now hit this overhead supply zone at 99.50. We got a temporary um, wick rejection here with this doji candle and we now will have to wait and see. We potentially could see a pullback and then maybe push higher to continue this uptrend, but this has been a pretty wacky pair. We've been seeing a lot of back and forth movements out of it, so nothing really on the radar, just keeping an eye on how it acts. Aussie dollar was one trade I was in um, the past week. As you can see, beautiful continuation of the downtrend, lower low, lower high. I was telling you guys with this setup, we had a shooting star off of this resistance, off of this trend line, off this 50 SMA, followed by this bullish engulfing. Um, this 72 was the strong support. I told you guys we were waiting for a break of, and price did just that. Came down and broke this 72, and really just pulled back a little bit, and then never looked back. Sold off hard. So Aussie dollar, very, very nice short. We now will wait for it to come down. There's a 70, um, very strong psychological support level down here. Price is most likely going to react to. So we'll wait for that bounce and potentially look for another short setup after. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, another great trade we took this week. As we saw, structure was in this lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Very similar setup um, to the Aussie dollar. We had this shooting star candle off of this 50 SMA, off resistance bearish engulfing we're watching for a break of this 66 level here on new zealand dollar this was a full uh double take profit trade um so we triggered in with this break lower here pulled back temporarily and then just fell like a rock and really just continued to fall and fall and fall very very strong sell off this week out of new zealand um with a real nice trade set up there new zealand dollar japanese yen we were looking for a potential break higher this start to this week um that did not end up playing out, obviously, with Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Very, 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 very bearish days. Um, we did have a break of this daily trend line. It was consolidating up here. Thought we could have broken out. Instead, we got this triple top to play out. Um, so this triple top pattern here. One, two, three. Neckline broke. Retest. Boom. Sold off. Very, very, very nice play there for that triple top. However, um, wasn't the setup we were looking for. So um, wasn't the trade idea that we wanted. Canadian dollar, Japanese yen on the watch list for this week. So now we are into what I am watching for this week. So we broke this weekly trend line um, with the gap up open last week. We've now pulled back, closed this gap, pulled back to a daily support level, retesting this weekly trend line. We could see a little more of a pullback down to around this 87 area down here, um, or we could end this pullback here on this support and continue. We will be keeping an eye on some daily reversal candle patterns, some counter trend line breaks some momentum bullish side um, to keep an eye on what we will be doing next with this um, CAD yen. But all in all, we are looking for longs now in this uptrend after this bearish pullback. We are looking for long opportunities. Similar setup in the euro yen. Uh, this has been on my watch list now for a uh, second week in a row now. Didn't get anything showing the end of this pullback here last week. We are now back down to this daily trend line. We're on the 200 SMA and a strong daily support. If we throw a Fibonacci retracement tool out here from this last swing move, I bet we'll be on a zone as well. 382. And we are between 382 and 50. So we have this um, higher a high, higher low, higher high. So we take the swing low to the swing high of the last higher high push. 
to see where this pullback off of this higher high is likely to end. And we are down to this 382 level, which is on this fifth, uh, 200 SMA acting as support here, which is also on this resistance, I mean support here, and also on this daily trend line here. So a lot lining up here for this trade. We will be watching for long opportunities, again with some um, confirmations to us that this pullback is coming to an end and it is likely to continue now in our direction. Pound yen, a little bit of a different setup. Uh, this is more of a breakout than a pullback. We are now moving in an uptrend, right? Setting higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. We've been basing in here, dropping it down a time frame. You can see this basing pattern, right? This bear um, pennant or rectangle, whatever you want to call it. It is a sideways consolidation in price action. It is price consolidating, moving sideways. Typically when we see that is a pause within a trend and we see a continuation afterwards, right? So we want to be watching this um, pound yen for a potential break of this resistance. And I like pairing these breakouts in trades like this around some kind of fundamental catalyst, whether it be something as simple as just looking for the breakout to occur in the London or US Open to, um, you know, putting a pending buy stop order up here for the GDP um, uh, report out of the pound on Wednesday. Either way, I like breakouts like this having some kind of a fundamental catalyst behind it. I don't want to look for this breakout at a random time um, at 12 p.m. Eastern time in the middle of the U.S. session with London closed or in the Asian market session. Uh, I don't want to just randomly look for a breakout with a setup like this. I want there to be strong momentum to push that price and to make sure that breakout doesn't just be a false breakout and has some momentum to really, really push it higher. Uh, pound Swiss franc. Another one, we had a trend reversal here. We uh, had this nice bullish crossover now here, 20 crossed above the 50. Price is trading nicely above the 50, setting a higher high. We want to wait for this, potentially the supply zone could do it, but we want to wait for price to pull back, come back down to us, get us in at a better price, cheaper price, discounted wholesale pricing to then look for a long opportunity to catch that next wave higher on the trend. Pound New Zealand, similar story, only this one uh, did as we called. We saw this pullback and then last week, I was expecting a push um, to the upside after that pullback. And as you guys can see here, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, extremely strong moves. We had some very, very 300 pip moves in three days. Very, very strong moves um, out of this pair. This was the pound, one of the strongest performers of the week, pinned up against New Zealand, the worst performer of the week. So great pair of matchup with strength and weakness. Um, and what we really ultimately want to do now, this is what we were looking for last week. It played out. Now we want to be looking for it again this week. We want to look for price to pull back, find support. Let this overbought fade out a little bit. Let some take profiting occur. Let some sell-offs occur. Let some reversal trade searchers um, try to catch the top of this here. Uh, we don't want to look for that top. This could continue higher before selling off. This could sell right off. This could just base. We want to, we want to, look, want to look for the top. We want to look for price to come to us, right? We want price to pull back. Look for buy opportunities in these ranges down here. Look for price to pull back to us and then try catching that next trending move higher. Euro pound uh, sold off very strong this week. Again, weak euro, strong pound matchup. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, very strong sell off. Broke right through the 200 SMA even. And now price is below the SMAs. 20s below the 50, both sloping downward below the 200 SMA even. We should see a bounce here pull back maybe we retest to um this 200 sma here and then sell off continue maybe as this red line suggests we pull back to 88.60 all in all we are looking for a pullback now again look for price to come to us show us something and then get in the next move down euro new zealand similar to the upside uh want to potentially catch this price to fade pull back consolidate base um and then try to catch that next push higher Euro Aussie, similar story. Um, this one's showing me a little bit of a difference. We're right now in this very strong supply zone on this strong resistance, and we are seeing some divergence. So um, this is a pair that I am expecting more so than the others to sell off. Again, this could very easily just rip through resistance and not sell off, but I am looking for this pair to sell off, pull back, um, off this zone and then we'll be looking for long opportunities if we get a nice pullback to a nice level and we see a potential setup for a long opportunity euro canadian dollar um, sold off lower again setting a lower low breaking prior structure pull back now maybe see a little bit deeper of a pullback this week 
Maybe this continues higher a little bit more, but we are seeing that 20 below the 50 SMA crossing over right now. We're seeing them both sloping downward. Prices trading below them, setting new lower lows, lower highs. So we are in a downtrend. Two bullish candles. We want to catch at least two bullish candles on a pullback and now look for opportunities for shorts. Could continue to pull back, so we will be waiting to see what price does and if it shows us a good setup there. Um, Aussie Swiss Franks, another trade we were in. Uh, my partner Savan called this out. I was in it as well. I let his call out work. Um, broke this counter trend line here, entered with this break of the support, consolidated for a while here, and then made another push to the downside. I do expect this pair to continue lower. I do think we can see this come down to at least this 69.50 level down here where this blue line is um, on this weekly zone. I want to see there, but this was a nice downtrend. Price pulled back, pretty far pullback, um, but still the 50 SMA held intact. And we got a bearish engulfing there, which led to this sell-off lower. Um, so a nice, nice sell-off there. This pair, again, we don't want to chase this bearishness. We'll potentially get another bounce here or so, but um, I expect this pair to continue lower. New Zealand dollar, Swiss franc, similar setup. This was a trade that we called out this week as well. Another very nice trade catching this New Zealand weakness. Uh, another one hit this resistance, hit this trend line, um, broke that counter trend line, triggered us in, rode it lower for... Uh, two days I actually did adjust my stop loss on Friday down here um, price on NFP just barely kicked me out and then shot down to the take profit two down here so I unfortunately did miss this big bearish candle here that was another strong strong push lower but I did t take profit one with basically both my positions so it was a nice winning trade but another one I expect to move to the downside I expect to continue lower, end up down here at around 63 to 63.50 level down here um, as this downtrend continues. So I, I do think that pair is good for some move lower, but no setups that I'll be going for. And then CAD Swiss franc, um, strong, strong, strong bullishness. I do want to try to catch the next momentous move after this. As you see, with strong moves like this, a lot of times you'll have a pullback or consolidation and then you'll get another leg. Um, feeding off that momentum so I am going to be looking for long opportunities here in CAD Swiss might get more of a pullback to start the week look for long somewhere is lower but all in all I am going to be looking for some potential long setups out of this CAD Swiss Frank alright guys that does it with all of the currencies we were breaking down again switching over to the news real quick we have a pretty damn slow week this week we got CPI and PPI inflation data out of the US Wednesday Thursday and GDP out of Great British Pound um, on Wednesday as well. The gross domestic product, pretty, pretty damn big indicator when it comes to economic growth in a country. So this is something that will have some very significant moves on the pound. That is for certain. They also have their manufacturing production month over month, the manufacturing sector, how much they're producing. Um, and these PPI, CPI numbers out of the U.S. are heavily watched by the central bank and the economy as a whole. So that will definitely cause some moves for the U.S. dollar. But other than that, we have a very quiet week. Monday, Tuesday, Friday, really nothing going on. Um, FOMC members speaking, but really, really nothing going on. Um, business confidence out of Australia Monday night is typically somewhat of a trade that we can look to catch some pips, 30, 40 pips or so off of around, but um, nothing really too crazy. So not much going on here fundamentally, guys, but we should see a decent week. We're in October. We are into the better trading months. Um, but thank you guys very much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. For anybody who doesn't know uh, CoreFX, we have a full training course here. 30 lessons, over 50 videos, um, covering everything, uh, really everything from psychology, developing trading plan, all that stuff, all the way down to exact entry strategies. Also have the Core FX uh, technical training room, a monthly signal room with uh, full breakdowns on trades, as well as weekly webinars and some educational content as well. So if you guys are interested in that, check out the link below. Um, appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. I hope you enjoy them, and I will catch you in the next one.